comrades, Dono. I know I didn't upload for a stupid amount of time, but I hope that this video redeems me. A while back though, we did a video on the Soviet GP5 gas mask. And by this point, it has well over 15,000 views. It's amazing, Suka, it's absolutely mind-blowing. I also noticed a lot of interest towards the stalker-inspired outfit we used in the cinematics for it, which is why today on Spark Project, we're going to put together a detailed Nova Stalker loadout. By the way, I'm Merriman, this is Bandit, and welcome to the video. We're not going to blindly copy Nova Stalkers from any of the original games. That's just not fun. What we are going to do is assemble a realistic and aesthetic kit based on the Stalker universe, but with gear and items actually available in that time and place. We will also use items that are out there to keep this impression on the budget-friendly side, in case you guys want to put together something similar. Before we get into the equipment, we need to outline the setting. According to Stalker lore, we are set in the alternate version of the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, located on the border between Ukraine and Belarus, with Russia in close proximity. The earliest chronological point is 2011, which is when Clear Sky takes place. The late 2000s were a peaceful time, the zone would see stalkers pouring in from all around the region, bringing along Soviet, Ukrainian, Russian and Western equipment. Post-Soviet space largely dictates our choice of gear, and since we're putting together a fresh stalker, budget is short and access to equipment is limited. With all of that in mind, let's prepare a bandit for his journey into the zone. As a base layer, we can use any military or civilian underwear. Vityagnashka would be an authentic option. For the top, just like in the game, the best option is a woven sweater. We're going to use a Soviet-produced one for extra authenticity. It is warm, simple, and keeps the neck closed. For the warmer season, you could stick to the Tjelnik alone. For the bottom, we're going to use simple jeans. They're cheap, comfortable, and durable. Blue ones fitted with a classic belt and properly tucked into the boots are at the core of any basic stalker kit. As per footwear, we decided to go with Berce type combat boots, a post-Soviet classic, which was and still is very popular. Keep in mind that footwear is crucial for any outdoor activities. What you select must be comfortable and reliable for you specifically. And don't forget to wear good socks. A staple item of any stalker impression is an overcoat. The best option is a Soviet hiking jacket maybe a short raincoat. Some stalker kits use long raincoats, which is authentic as well. We have one and you might have seen it in our previous videos, but we decided against using it here. It blocks access to any equipment under it and doesn't allow for load-bearing solutions over it. It's just too impractical. What we will use is a Soviet factory jacket made of tarp with protective properties. Over the years, someone stripped it of the original buttons, but I replaced them with metal ones from a Soviet army uniform. I also added a round chevron of the Free Stalkers. Although it lacks a hood, I'm still happy with the result, not to mention that it has large and functional pockets. As you can see, we're using some headwear to keep Bandit warm and unidentified. A woven wool hat makes sense as a popular option, and for the mask, we decided to go with a triangular bandage. It is a common find among Soviet medical supplies and was very popular in Afghanistan and Chechnya. A balaclava is the simplest alternative. We will round up the clothing portion of this impression with a pair of gloves to protect bandit's hands from the cold and sharp edges of the zone. In game, stalkers often use fingerless gloves, and so are we. Except these are not leather but old tactical ones. They're so old and worn out that Bandit had to trim the fingers off himself just to keep using them. It doesn't get more authentic than this. Although Nova Stalker doesn't have much gear and heavy load-bearing equipment would be excessive, there is still stuff to be carried. In-game, Fresh Stalkers consistently use a waist belt for that purpose. Specifically, the Soviet Army Officer's Belt from the Cold War period. This is exactly what we're going to use as well. It is a reliable leather belt with a strong buckle. They come in three sizes, and they're easy to get your hands on. So, a lot of our equipment will be assembled on this belt. Speaking of equipment, the crucial piece here is of course a firearm. In-game it's common to see beginner stalkers with all sorts of cheap local weaponry. The most common pattern is of course the PM or Makarov pistol. But we have selected something better. This is a WE Repro of the Tulski Tokarev, model 1933. 
an old Soviet semi-automatic pistol for a powerful 7.62x25mm cartridge. It was designed and produced since the early 1930s as a service weapon for the Red Army in very large amounts. By the 1960s, though, the Makarov started replacing the Tokarev en masse, so an equally large amount of them ended up in long-term storage, from where they began to gradually trickle into the black market to be obtained by all sorts of bandits, renegades, and surely stalkers. The absence of holsters on Nova stalkers in game with the presence of pistols is a big mystery to me. But, like most Soviet pistols, the TT-33 comes with a belt-worn holster, so we are going to use it. This one is of post-war production, made of Kirza with leather elements. It has a slot for a spare magazine and a pair of loops for the cleaning rod. An original leather pistol sling is a worthwhile addition to the holster, which a regular stalker would most probably neglect. But you wouldn't want to find yourself suddenly unarmed in the middle of the junkyard, would you now? For that situation though, and for tons of other practical purposes, any stalker would carry a knife. Throughout the original games, our character would use what is likely to be the American M9 bayonet. In reality though, that would be very difficult to obtain, especially with a short budget. The best thing a Nova stalker would be able to get his hands on is a Soviet 6H3 or 6H4 AK bayonet. Given that, the latter is what we will use. It comes in a Bakelite belt-mounted scabbard, which is exactly what we need. Together with the scabbard, it also doubles as a pretty neat multi-tool. In the original series, Nova Stalkers carry something closely resembling a US army canteen of the Alice system, which is, just like the M9, an unrealistic candidate for our purpose. We decided to use a standard issue Soviet army canteen instead. It comes in a fabric cover designed to be mounted on a belt, just like the American counterpart. They're sturdy, cheap and abundant, which is exactly what we're looking for. Although it's not always the case in game, the one thing it's hard to imagine any stalker without is, of course, a gas mask. Thankfully, on post-Soviet space there is an excessively wide nomenclature of functional, abundant, and dirt cheap gas masks. Out of them all, many would work, but from our own aesthetic point of view, the GP4U is a good option, which is why we're going to use it. Of course, we're not just using the mask, but the whole assembly instead. If you're interested in learning about the GP4U gas mask in detail, we have previously made a full video on it specifically. Here is a recommendation if you would like to check it out. We're done with our first echelon of gear, but since we're creating a realistic impression, it would make sense for us to include some of the secondary equipment, as well as the smaller but nonetheless necessary items a stalker would carry with him as he takes his first steps in the zone. What a stalker would also need is something to carry a scarce possession of CGI. For that purpose, we decided to use a Soviet Army duffel bag. These bags were mass-produced and remained virtually unchanged since the Second World War. With being very simple, reliable, and easy to get your hands on, it makes a perfect stalker bag. It is also consistent with many concept arts out there. The main compartment could hold a multitude of things, the first of which in our case is a Soviet Army mess kit with a metal spoon. Apart from the belt-worn canteen, a stalker would surely carry something for sustenance. So here we have a can of tourist delight, army hardtack, instant coffee, tea, powdered cream, and some cube sugar. All of that polished by Semishki for a snack, and a pack of gum. Not a military-grade ration, but it's something. We have a waffle towel that doubles as a tablecloth when it needs to, an animal cup, as well as some matches, to aid in warming up meals. The main compartment could also hold a spare gas mask filter, flashlight, some batteries, and a roll of blue wire tape that fixes all plausible problems. The separate pocket holds the medical supplies, consistent with the original games, which include a bandaging kit and an AI2 med kit that we also have a full video on. Here is another recommendation. When the duffel bag is put on, it offers additional load bearing space. For example, the gas mask could be passed through the side straps to leave the face piece resting on the shoulder for improved access, not to mention that it looks cool. A reliable Zippo lighter and a handful of throwing bolts for detecting anomalies will be the final touch to our Nova Stalker loadout. Although we put together a rather detailed impression, there are some things we did not include. For example, an artifact container, a PDA, perhaps some spare ammunition and grenades. Those would have been perfectly in place here. Regardless, this is exclusively our vision of the slowdown, and it is by no means absolute. 
Rather, it's just a template of insight for anyone who is putting together something similar. If you're planning to use this as a base for an airsoft kit, make sure not to forget about eye protection. Apart from that, the kit is good to go. Of course, you, comrade, might have your own understanding of the things a stalker would carry with him. And if you do, feel very welcome to complete our impression with your ideas down in the comments. Thanks a ton to anybody who watched the video up to this point. As you know, watch time is one of the decisive factors in the YouTube algorithm. It means a lot for the development of the channel. You might have also noticed that we're trying out a new format. If you enjoyed seeing us put together a full loadout and you want to see more of those, perhaps a historical one or something, make sure to leave us some feedback down in the comments. And if you like the video in general, please do consider subscribing to help us out as well. I'm once again sorry that we took a while to put this video out, but we're trying to get out on a proper upload schedule, but just sometimes life gets on the way. Anyways, this is it for right now, but hopefully soon, see you in the next video. Давай! Кидай болт. Так это смешно. Да. Ну как? Я типа... Кидай болт, кому говорить? Ну как его кинуть? Чтобы это выглядело не так тупо. Да это априори тупо, кидай болт. Так а зачем нам это добавлять? Да кидай болт! Вот так вот. With all of that in mind, let's prepare a bandit for his journey into the zone. If you enjoyed seeing us put together a full loadout, and if you wanted one... <laughs> As you know, watch time is one of the crucial elements. Сука, блядь, ёбаный свет, чё ж так-то, а? Ёбаный свет.